Ekomamai, welcome and aloha. This is uh, again from uh, Hayat Regency in Maui, Hawaii and uh, beautiful islands here. Uh, this is the next part of the video series I recorded at the Hayat Regency on Hawaiian culture and language. Uh, in this video you'll see a continuation of the discussion about how the experts here, teachers and professors have passed on the Hawaiian language to their uh, uh, next generations and so on. Uh, feel free to watch the first part also and uh, keep coming back for more such videos from different locations, different cultures and uh, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to my channel before you go. Mahalo! So you have a glimpse of uh, the teachers who are actively working. Our semester just finished a couple weeks ago and that's why we have a chance to meet on a holiday to uh, get together and try to figure out what are ways we can further inspire our students uh, because we want, we are the foundation makers for many of our students. They don't have uh, Hawaiian language in their home uh, and they probably grew up speaking English and we do have some students who graduated out of our immersion schools who want to further their academic journey in the university system. And so I'd like to ask several of our Kumu, to know Tanela and Nau e Ko'o so we have this many chairs, but this many kumu, and so those who would like to uh, have a seat at the panel. You know, we have parents, we have um, kumu hula, we have um, kumu who have been teaching for many years, and we also have uh, kumu who have recently come on board in the last so we have a good uh, variety of uh, educators responsible for our foundation on Hawaiian. Does Hawaiian language live in your daily life? As a profession, we teach Hawaiian, and it's a responsibility more than anything else. But in order for our language to live, it has to live within our world, our daily life. And so I'd like to ask, are come here. What are some things that you do <coughs> that the Olelo is really, uh, lives uh, in your practice, in your leisure time, in your work? What are those ways? Because there was a time where many of us were uh, directed into education to become a teacher, a Hawaiian immersion teacher. But over the years, Hawaiian is found in many more areas. So, as foundational language, Kumu, how does the language live in your daily life? Well, first of all, hello everyone for, for attending. Uh, and as you saw on the uh, sign that might have brought you here, this is the international. Year of indigenous languages, and so any of you who are speakers of other indigenous languages in the world, mahalo to all of you for, for coming today and sharing. Again, my name is Kiwope, and I uh, would say that in my life, uh, a way to keep Olelo Hawaii, um, and I, I wish I could just hand you my phone so that you could take all of my apps and, and icons, because the Hawaiian language lives in part through the technology of today. And so I get on the internet and there are uh, hours and hours of taped recordings of uh, native speakers. And I'm kind of choked up because most of them have passed now. And that's really unfortunate. So that's one end of the spectrum, is keeping it alive by listening to their voices. We don't have many native speakers left really. And so we have, we have this, responsibility that we want to take on, but it really was generated by them. Honestly, in my home, my wife and I don't always speak Hawaiian with each other, uh, but it is a place on the other end of the spectrum where I will speak in Hawaiian only to my children. And so that's that term that you heard Kekoa uh, Harma sharing with you. Uh, it can be called intergenerational transmission. 
That's how the, the language is going to live. It's not going to live only in classrooms. It's going to live by parents talking to their children. And what little I can do with my children, I do. And then, of course, if I do, and I, I do have a Facebook account, you can friend me if you like. I try, <laughs> I try to, to write everything that I do on Facebook in Hawaii. Those are just a few things that come to mind. Uh, I also want to thank the Hyatt for allowing us to, to be here and giving us space for Hawaiian language to be heard by um, our Kamaaina, our Malihini, and even to be heard by the Hyatt itself. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I think we're all we're all under the impression that Hawaiian language still kind of lives in the walls of the schools. And for me personally, um, Hawaiian language only really got out of all of my educational settings uh, when I really met my wahine. And um, we, have, we have two daughters, and so we were able to start a household that uh, speaks Hawaiian. Um, but aside, also aside from that, uh, I'm I hula. I hula? <laughs> I, not, not the to our case I, <laughs> I I'm a hula dancer uh, and a musician and so um, Hawaiian language has actually exponentially furthered my education in hula and music um, and so doing that on my own uh, with my family with my teachers um, that's a huge way that Hawaiian language lives in my life and a huge way that I was able to learn <coughs> further than I probably ever could have if I didn't have that. So, um. <coughs> Mahalo for having us again. My name is Hali Dio Solomon. I really want to reiterate this, uh, the points that were already addressed in terms of a big um, corporate hotel like this acknowledging it. But really, for the how do we celebrate? Um, the year of indigenous languages. This, to me, is a big celebration of uh, Malihini and Kamahina alike, and just the recognition means a lot. Um, language, there's nothing really simple about revitalizing language, reversing language shift, reclaiming language. Um, it's all kind of always an uphill battle, and just some set events like this that seem um, maybe small. Um, <clears throat> just to this scale, it actually really do make a big impact in, the, in a positive way. So, I, mean, I don't think I'm really answering the question because um, most of my Hawaiian language really exists in my work because the only child, only grandchild in my family to, to have reclaimed um, all of Hawaii, I can't really speak it with too many of my family members, unfortunately. My son is raised by um, his mother's full time. I see him once a week, so I'll speak to him a little bit, but he goes back to them most of the time and they speak English to him. There's no real easy space or easy way to revitalize the language, but um, things like that. Actually, I think it's communicates more. I don't like it. Little by little progress is made, and yeah, model. <coughs> I'm very thankful to be here at the Hyatt Regency. Growing up as a child here on Maui, um, the Oihana Ho people Malihini to have um, visitors was very important. Um, actually, my family worked at the hotel, worked in hotels on the side, Sheraton, Maui Marriott, and so this was a big part of I mean, people were, their livelihood. So to be here speaking about Hawaiian language, something that's a very big part of my life is. Very nice. Mahalo, Mahalo, Mahalo for um, having us here because it, it, it's actually um, it's an affirmation that uh, that we can have Hawaiian language and culture within our visitor industry uh, and that, that visitors are hungry for it and desiring to have this understanding about our culture and language. So um, this, just kind of sharing with you um, that some of the things that have already been shared, but for us, the school has been a big part of um, helping us see how our, uh, our language can be used. 
the Hawaiian language isn't my first language, but I actually have to go to school to learn at the university. The beautiful thing too about this is that Kumuki Ope is one of my first teachers, my Hawaiian language teacher. <laughs> and to so, um, sit here with him too is, is just amazing too. But a lot of our programs are like that, that we have that ability to learn from our teachers and we can teach with them even at this age and, and learn. So the school has been a big part of Hawaiian, um, my life and learning Hawaiian um, and then also for my children because without the Punanaleo, the Hawaiian language nest program, uh, we wouldn't have had a, a place to send our children to learn Hawaiian and reinforce a lot of the things that we um, we taught at home, speaking Hawaiian at home, but also to see how that that continuum is also there with the uh, education of our children. So school has been a big part of it, but according to linguists, they see that as you know it's my linguistic friend down there. <laughs> that um that you know really um the school is actually just a life support for the language that as Kumuki Ope shared too that it really needs to live within the home um intergenerationally between grandparents, parents and children for the language to live. So having the language in the home is a very important part of that and it's a big part for us too. Um, hula songs Chance realizing that that's something that's not only a part of the school setting too, that that there's a, there's a time and place for um, for all of these different melodies that we have. We're so blessed for Hawaiian music to have all this. We have so much. You know, we have so much. I mean, especially in the Hawaiian language, all Hawaiian language newspapers. But for our chants and songs, there's been so much that's been passed down to us that we can use um, in all aspects of our life. So that aspect, I think, has actually pushed me to really want to understand more about chants and songs and how these older things, older bodies of knowledge connect to us today. And how do we um, connect to the way our kupuna, our elders thought and the way they did things um, in all aspects of life. So that's been a big part of my life and how I try to um, continue that on an everyday basis. Can everyone hear me? Mahalo. Uh, there's so much awesome manao that was already shared. But I was thinking, you know, one thing that I, I would like to share with everybody is that my mom, who's probably not going to like that I'm sharing this right now, but was born in 1945, which puts her in her early 70s right now. And my mom was one of 13 children born to uh, pure Hawaiian individuals, so my mom is pure Hawaiian, and she grew up in a time where her parents spoke fluent Hawaiian, were native speakers of Hawaiian, but were in an environment where they were made ashamed to um, speak Hawaiian and also to teach it to their children. So as a result, my, neither my mom nor any one of her siblings were taught Hawaiian. So she grew up with my grandparents, of course, and the rest of her family, aunties and uncles, all of whom spoke Hawaiian, knew a huge amount of wonderful cultural information, were very musical and very talented, but she learned very little from them because um, my ohana was made to feel ashamed for knowing all of that, and uh, were pushed to educate their children through English in a very Western system. So my mother and all of her siblings went through that and um, that accomplished you know, a decent bit, but they were very, they were robbed actually of all of that very important cultural learning. <coughs> so that, uh, my mom, one of the younger ones, was um, the one who was asking questions, the one who went to auntie and uncle and, and mom and dad and asked, what, what are you folks talking about? How do you say this in Hawaiian? Um, how do you play that song? Can you sing it for me? And no one would really give her too much information. So um, she grew up and uh, chose to learn Hawaiian in college and chose to speak it to her children, you know, when she had us. So my experience growing up was one that was very surrounded and very supportive around Ola Hawaii. And it was because of that experience. But at the same time, my experience in Ola Hawaii was very much based in the classroom and in book learning. So I really, really lost out. So since then, we've had to sort of balance our, our learning. We know that there is value in some resources, um, 
but we know that there is humongous value in the kinds of resources that we weren't able to have growing up, namely our kukuna, and learning it among our family members who, again, got robbed of that experience. So there's a whole huge historical reason for that, that I'm not going to get political. I want to, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but, if you're, but if you're interested in it, you know, there are resources that we can help you find to read up on it, uh, real stuff. Um, as a result, my uh, growing up was very enriched in Olau Hawaii. It was a very normal thing, and it was something that we all engaged in. My younger brothers were among the first uh, students in the Hawaiian immersion program, both at the preschool level as well as the elementary and then into the high school level. I never got a chance to do that because I was too old, but I, you know, I went to school and I learned it in, in high school. And then I continued on in college and stuff like that. So I lived vicariously through my younger brothers who were learning in school. And um, that created a very, uh, well, we were very close because of that. And we were all able to establish Hawaiian language as our main um, cultural method of communication, whether it was in Hawaiian or in English in a cultural context, we were able to establish that. So what that led to was my mom, who was still a very grounded cultural resource for all of us, and myself as well as all of my brothers. Um, my brothers all have children, and nearly all of them speak Hawaiian, as well as my brothers and myself. So we, we hope to not hope. We aim to, par, um, to continue to participate in that kind of communication, not only among our ohana, but among all the people we work with and interact with in our communities and even beyond Hawaii. Um, it's just a natural thing that we do next to our ohana. So um, we wish the same thing for every other ohana that's out there and really look for ways to support other folks. If that's what you're looking for, you have a wonderful bunch of people in front of you who can help you accomplish that as well. I just want to add a few uh, thoughts to uh, what, what's been shared here earlier. Um, going back to what Kumu uh, Kiyote uh, was saying about um, the language is living through technology. Um, you know, uh, I, I strongly support that statement, but there were building like <laughs> um, you know, it's not the it's not the the end of say for Hawaiian learning Hawaiian language, but it's it's a it's a good way to get started. And, and so it does, I see it through um, you know, I see the language living through technology, and I, and I'm honored to say that and also that generation that um, that was able to 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 uh, know with those who uh, sit with them, talk to them, and they're kind of like a bridge to my generation. Uh, as far as passing down uh, the language. Uh, now that I'm a Makua, or a parent, I have two kids, I, I want to go back and get to what uh, Kumukio could say about uh, intergenerational um, language, passing the language down from one generation to the next. Uh, as a Makua, I have two kids, and, I, and a word popped into my head, and I want to add to that because intergenerational um, uh, passing of the language. Uh, for me, my, my dad was real strict uh, bringing us up. Now I don't know what happened to him. He's super soft with my family. I think that's the story for all Kukuna in the age of age. But um, it, it kind of had that feeling when he was growing up is, I'm the Makua, you're the king. And, um, as long as you live in this house, and as long as I'm the time, you're gonna do what I say. And uh, I kind of adopted that for my kids. <laughs> but they didn't have a choice of what language they're speaking. You know, they grew up speaking Hawaiian to me. My wife is learning. Um, she speaks to them in English, but they know that when they talk to me, we only communicate in Hawaiian, and they only communicate to each other in Hawaiian. And if I hear them speaking English to each other, in my house, in front of me, I scold them. And that might set off some uneasy feelings about language, but again, as long as they're in my house, and I'm the one, they can do it. And as they get older, you know, they, they can make their own choices about what language you want to speak. But now they have no choice. And, um, and one day they will, and they'll recognize, and I 
hope I hope they choose to um, continue speaking Hawaiian to each other. And for me, I, I cut. I, sorry to talk so long, but my family. I have four brother. I have three brothers that are all involved in Hawaiian language, and it kind of came. One got started, then the next, then the other, and then now all four of us can basically communicate in Hawaiian uh, almost about anything. Um, but we all grew up speaking English to each other. So it's been uncomfortable at some times to grow up. We established our relationship in one language, and now we're choosing to speak another language. And I just felt like I could avoid that situation with my kids, where they don't feel uncomfortable speaking English or Hawaiian as their language. And um, so through my kids, that's how I see the language. I see a future for it, and I see it continuing through them. As, as I do with a lot of um, kids and their parents who speak Hawaiian to them and them speaking to each other. Um, so that's how I see it living. That's how it lives in, in my house. Yeah. The meaning which means the seeker. My Kani says uh, my name should be Kaniele, which means I'm snooping. Um, <laughs> so I'm reading your life's paper. <laughs> and she's got underlined all of the Hawaiian language lives. The way I experience Hawaiian is Hawaiian grew out of Hawaii, and the Hawaiians have this relationship with Hawaii where they can speak to it, and Hawaii speaks back. Um, with my Kane, his parents spoke Hawaiian, but the children did not. But when his parents spoke, Clouds went away, or wind came, or waves rose. Um, when I walked with him, and when he speaks, I hear voices answer. And I looked at his throat to make sure he wasn't being a ventriloquist, but no. <laughs> um, and this happened at a sea cliff, where he called to ask permission to go over there. And after we heard the voices, I went snoop over the sea cliff, and I looked down, and there was cliff, and there was sea. So there was nobody there. And I got to hear Hawaii answer. This is why I love Hawaii, and this is how it lives for me. Um, what the elders knew about the places, about the plants, about everything in Hawaii, they gave names to it all. And so for me, the names of the places, and the plants, and the animals, and and the winds and the rains and everything tell us about who those people are because we consider all the elements of Hawaii to be living people. Um, so that's a cause, Mr. Booker. Um, but also wanted to thank all of you for coming because <coughs> the fact that you came means that you care to hear Hawaii. Um, 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 <coughs>
spend time with more ohana with more um, people who chant and more people who hold up and do community work on the aina. And so, Mahalo to Hawaiian music, and you know, and my ohana as well was uh, working in the volcano industry, especially on Kauai, because it's so beautiful, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the main work that my family did in the hotels was playing music and dance hula. And we know that if it weren't for Hawaiian music, that Hawaiian music was the steady thing that lasted through all the trials and tribulations of Hawaiian language. And so to all the entertainers, to all the Hawaiian musicians who have serenaded and served in the hotel world, we have them to thank as well, because that practice never really faded. In fact, that was the lifeline for many of us. As we train in Olelo, we use the mele to help us learn to speak. And so, um, mahalo for this kinds of setting where Hawaiian music is important for this place. Yeah? yeah. That's why you guys here too, you wanna hear good Hawaiian music? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The musicians here. And they are not here just to entertain, they serve a purpose of keeping the language heard in this place. And so, I'm a musician too, so okay. Like, yes, but the musicians. <laughs> it's not just for entertaining you all. We have the responsibility to carry the stories of the places and to sing these songs so that our tree people can hear, so our kohi, our mountains can hear, so that our oceans can hear the voices of this land. 